It's no secret that real estate is one of the best investment vehicles out there. But how can we determine which strategies will best align with our financial ambitions? Well, you've come to the right spot. Whether you're an active real estate entrepreneur, a passive investor, or looking to get into real estate investing, our goal is to provide investors with the insights and strategies for building our portfolios all while protecting our capital. I'm Daniel Nichols, and this is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. Hey guys, as you know, I'm a big fan of passive real estate investing. And as a busy W-2 professional working in the oil and gas industry, this type of investing has been a complete game changer for me. It's allowed me to build income streams faster, access private off-market opportunities, and bring stability to my portfolio by investing in hard assets like apartments and self-storage facilities. So if you're looking to learn more about these types of opportunities, I highly suggest you check out Upstream Equity. Whether you work in the oil and gas industry like me, or you're a busy professional looking to grow your investment portfolio, Upstream Equity is your go-to source for passive real estate investing. They do all the heavy lifting for you, from building strategic relationships with best-in-class operators to finding quality passive income opportunities. Upstream Equity truly makes this a hands-off experience. To find out more, go to upstreaminvestor.com. Once again, that's upstreaminvestor.com. All right, let's get into the show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Daniel Nichols, accompanied by our guest for the week, Stuart Keller. And today we are the two smart assets. For those not familiar with Stuart, he works with Lloyd Jones, a Miami based private equity group focused on acquiring and enhancing senior living communities throughout the US. Stuart's background uniquely covers both asset management and on site operations oversight for the past 15 years and more. Stuart, my man, it is great to see you. Welcome to the show. It is absolutely wonderful to be here, Danny. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Pumped to have you on, man. We're going to dive into a topic that we haven't talked about on this podcast ever. So this is going to be very exciting. But before we do that, man, we want to learn more about you. Tell us more about your background, your story, and how you got to where you are today, really. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, you know, just kind of a little uh, brief that we were covering, j covering just before the call is, you know, really started out um, on the analytics side, numbers, doing asset management, acquisitions, dispositions uh, for a smaller private equity group. Um, after my daughter was born, I moved over into operations uh, in the multifamily space, actually overseeing properties, working with the property managers as a regional manager, and then moved up into a regional VP capacity. Um, and then several years ago, um, joined Lloyd Jones originally to work on their um, on their management side, and then quickly moved over into the asset management side. Um, after we've gone through and uh, sold. Quite a few of the assets, um, you know, one of the visions for the company was to be able to build out a syndication platform uh, geared towards our own senior living communities. Um, so far this year, we've closed on, I think we're at nine or 10, um, and we're on track to, wow. you know, close anywhere from 15 to 20 properties this year, you know, given the senior living space, the, you know, forecast demand, and just kind of the multifamily 2.0, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's kind of the topic we're going to dive into today and it's it's a big issue that we're hearing more and more about, right? So let's just let's just get into it. You know, just like I said over the last few years, it seems the conversation around, you know, this upcoming wave of retirees is it's really only getting louder this conversation, right? You're hearing more and more about it. You know, baby boomers are hitting retirement age and there's reason we should be paying attention to this, right? And that's kind of what we're going to dive into today. Yeah, so absolutely. so you're the man to talk to about this. Uh, walk us through it a bit. Some of the numbers of you know the aging baby boomers, this demographic shift we're having, and, and why it's important that we're paying attention. Yeah, so there's really kind of two to three different primary metrics. You know, without digging into the specificity of the of the operations of these deals, mm. I mean, really starting in 2019, you know, the baby boomers, 10,000 baby boomers started turning 65 every day. Every single day since 2019, 10,000 of those baby boomers started turning 65. In 2022, those baby boomers uh, started turning 75. Now, the growing population of seniors, really 75 and older, is going to grow substantially. Now, you'd have to go look up the statistics. I, I, I don't recall all of the granularity right offhand. But in short, looking at the kind of growing uh, aging population, and then you look at how many actual senior living facilities there are and properties, I, I should call them communities, 
how many of these communities there are, and then how many units or apartments um, that are actually currently in existence mm-hmm. and how many are being delivered every year. We're looking at anywhere from a 900,000 to 1.5 million unit shortfall by 2030. Wow. So right now, between the effects of COVID on construction delays, on the um, you know supply chain issues, we're actually seeing a slowdown in construction starts for senior living properties. So we're going the wrong direction right now in terms of overall development. The properties that are being developed are really targeting the kind of top 20% of earners, as well as the bottom 20% in the form of tax credit communities. Mm. So you've got this massive middle market, the 60% that is just being ignored completely. I mean, They're not going to have enough in their savings to afford the brand new construction deals, and they're not going to qualify to live in the tax credit communities. So the opportunity right now is to provide the middle market, you know, great places to live in the senior living space. And that really starts with the active adult communities, which typically um, the average age for somebody to enter into an active adult space a uh, study actually just came out. It was like 72 and a half to 73 years old. Okay. The average length of stay is anywhere from four to five years. But the unique twist on senior living relative to people familiar with multifamily. So you have an average length of stay on active adult of, you know, that four or five, six years. But the but the average turnover relative to multifamily is 20%. So you're only cycling out 20% of your residents who are either going to move to an independent living community or just move elsewhere, um, you know, possibly out of state. So you're you're seeing just this, this huge influx of demographics needing a place to live that there's just not going to be enough. So what Lloyd Jones is doing, and I've kind of coined the term uh, philanthropic investing. Uh, I don't know if my boss has heard that. Yet. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it's we're we're a private equity group, but but we're looking to do something meaningful with our acquisitions and our management, and not only our management, but how we manage. So you know, it, it it's it, it has been a huge learning experience for me over the past call it ninety days, where senior living really needs to encompass, you know all the different aspects of wellness from, you know, continuing to move, you know, you look at the the depression, the memory loss issues, the Alzheimer's issues, a lot of those different items can be combated with just companionship, Mm -hmm. listening to music, movement, health, general wellness. And that's, that's what we're delivering throughout our, our entire uh, Aviva brand of properties right now. Um, probably a very long-winded answer, but it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped about it. Um, and if you look at the metrics, kind of where the available houses are now or available housing supply now versus the forecasted demand, we're really positioned where multifamily was in 2010. Oh, wow. So, you know, to put that into context, Cap rates in multifamily have gone. I mean, back in March and April, you were looking at deals on the acquisition side. They're like sub 3% for a core plus deal in Orlando. I mean, just absolutely insane prices. Right now, you know, whether it's stabilized or unstabilized, that, you know, needs a few move ins on the senior living space, we're underwriting deals to a 25 IRR, seven and a half plus yield. And the cap rates are, you know, high single digits, if not low double digits depending upon the asset class and the market. So there's a very unique um, opportunity to get into senior living right now. Um, We recognize that opportunity. So that's, that's why we're in this, in this big, you know, acquisition mode throughout the United States. Um, You know, and then we're also wanting to really open it up to accredited investors. So, you know, it's mid September right now when, when we're filming, when, when this comes out, um, we will have everything available for uh, accredited investors to be able to actually buy in to cash flowing assets. 
Yeah, I, you know, there's a lot there, but just on that last point specifically, I know there are a lot of people who are looking to enter uh, into senior living as a passive investor, right? Because just just all the things you said, because of the demand there and this basic Goldilocks syndrome in terms of like, hey, like this is the opportunity, this is the time to to pounce on this opportunity uh, yeah. while it's there from a from an investing standpoint, right? You know, and this is kind of a feel good thing as well. So, but I want to back up just a little bit, man. So, you know, when people hear the term senior living, there might be they might have a different picture painted in the head depending on what who you are and you know what your thoughts are tell us describe a little bit more what senior living is. is you know nursing homes all that stuff there's a whole bunch of different variety of these things can you describe what comes with senior living what that looks like yeah so great question um you know this has been one of the big learning parts for me is so you've really got senior living broken down into four different areas so okay. you have your active adult which is pretty much your multifamily properties with a lot more activities and they're age restricted. So you have to be 55 years or older, you move in, you've got your barber shop, you know, your your nail salon, you've got a little library. You've got a lot of really neat amenities um available to you. Um the next level of care or the next kind of component is going to be your independent living. Mm-hmm. Now, the only distinction between independent living and, you know, active adult is that independent living is going to have more services. They're going to include all the meals for you. They typically come with a professionally managed kitchen. Um, There's going to be more vendors on hand coming in and out of the property. You're going to have higher rents. You're going to have higher expenses, but the operating margins are actually going to increase. Um, Your next level is um, memory care, or I'm sorry, it's uh, assisted living which is going to add a layer of, you know, nurses um, and other medical professionals to really provide that support to, you know, the the aging cohort. And then the final stage is memory care and skilled nursing, Um, you know, individuals that uh, need quite a bit more um, medical assistance. When you think about what one of these properties looks like, you know, you're probably thinking, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, originally my thought was something kind of sterile. Mm. Um, the actual communities are gorgeous. You walk in, there's music playing, you're greeted. You know, there's, it, it's a very warm and welcoming environment. They look like very high-end apartments okay, um, with a whole different kind of feel. Um, you know, working in senior living, you have a a unique and very valuable characteristic to care for the care for the elderly. Um, you know, so as you know, you walk into an apartment and it's like all hustle and bustle. You walk into a senior living community, it's very calming, it's very warm, it's very um, you know, uh very inviting um sure. for, for literally anybody that walks in. And all the residents just love to talk. It's it's actually great. I I I went and toured one of our properties and you know, I was I was hitting it off with 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 all the residents. It was great. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it actually sounds like a, a pretty neat place to be, especially for residents. You know, you're taking care of these people, and you know, these people they they might need extra care, right? But you know, you want to provide this place of comfort and this place where they have all the amenities, right? And so that kind of takes me to my next question. Since you've entered this space, senior living, obviously there's been this there's been changes throughout the world, but obviously there's been changes in senior living as well. What type of evolution are you seeing within senior living right now? And where do you see this going in the future? You know, say, say we're talking about 2030 when this demand uh, issue is really taking full effect. What does that look like in terms of evolution? What do we need to get to, to get to the point to where, you know, these are what you have in your vision? Yeah. So um, great, great question. Um, So there's really two components to that, you know, when you look at senior living in a kind of narrow focus right now, you're thinking, oh, you know, there, there's going to be plenty of people to staff the properties. If you look at the ratio between 18 to 64 year olds to those 75 and older, back in the 60s, it was like five to one. Mm. And then you moved to today and it's like three to one. Wow. By 2030, it's going to be a one to one ratio. Wow. So you're going to have more seniors than those less than 18 years old. That's great. The senior population is going to comprise a huge majority. So as this evolves, you're going to start to see a not only a huge demand and the wages increase for people to actually work at these at these properties, 
Um, but you're also going to see a, a, a different dynamic shift in the overall investor demand. So it's going to right now, it's not in your face. So nobody's really, really, really talking about it. But as soon as it's here, people are going to be scrambling to, you know, to be able to get involved. And, you know, Chris Finley, who is our, our, our chairman and CEO, he has been just phenomenal about spotting trends. I mean, I, I, I don't know what books he reads, but, you know, as far as like looking at the trends and what's going to happen, um, I mean, guy knows his stuff for sure. Sure. Yeah, that's, I mean, there's a lot there, right? And I think that being able to forecast those trends and recognize them and where they're going, I think is super important, especially for, you know, somebody like me who's a passive investor. I want to be relying on, te on teams who are being able to see the future and being able to kind of see where things are going, especially with something like senior housing, right? And so my, my question is, in terms of this demand and how we're going to fill it or fill it, uh, and you know, by 2030, right? Do you see that being solely relying on uh, new development, or do you think they're going to be repurposing other asset types? Uh, where do you think how we're going to be able to fill that gap? What does that look like for you guys? Yeah, so um, we've actually been exploring uh, hotel conversions. Okay. Um, where you actually buy, um, you know, the extended stay hotels. You know, they they have a small kitchen, they have the different components. So we're actually um, I believe we're actually working on on one right now on the development side um, of actually buying up hotels and turning them into senior living properties. That's going to be big. Um, obviously, where the demand goes, capital follows. Sure. Um, so, so I, I think there's going to be kind of a multifaceted approach of you know as soon as the as soon as the demand really gets there, uh, prices are are, are going to just you know significantly shoot up overnight um and having a portfolio or an investment in senior living is just going to be like pretty pretty significant kind of where multifamily went from 2017 to 2021 or 2022 right yeah and i think i think being on the forefront of that trend is going to be massive especially for investors right especially for even passive investors right i know there was a lot of talk you know, a handful of years ago, maybe 10 years ago about mobile home parks, right? And they, you know, they just got slammed and people were buying mobile home parks as fast as they possibly could. And, you know, been a great investment ever since. And I think being able to be on the forefront of this trend is going to be another, like, just like you said, it's going to be this great wave to ride for investors. So as an, say, say I'm an investor, I'm looking to get into senior housing. I, I know multifamily, I know self-storage. Uh, we, you know, we look at those deals all the time and I've, invested in those deals all the time. Say that's the type of investor that's coming to you to look at senior housing. What are the things do I need to be looking at as a passive investor to make this investment make sense for me? Obviously there's demand there, right? Um and you know, as a passive investor we're looking for cash flow returns, all that stuff, right? Benefits. What what is that what do I need to be evaluating as a passive investor when looking at senior housing? Yeah, so one of the biggest things to really look at is, you know, the the market demand. You know, the actual age cohort, the demographics of the average incomes in the area of those 45 plus, as well as the incomes and the actual total number of people, um, you know, that that fall into that age demographic within a five mile radius. You know, all of the construction that's been going on in senior living or like 70 to 80 percent of it has been in like five primary markets. Really? A deal that we that we that we closed on and is actually going to be our is our first deal on our um, syndication platform is in Valparaiso, Indiana. Okay. Now there's no new construction going on. It's got five competitors. There's a total of like 293 senior living homes or like units um, in the market, and you go on and you look at these reports. And just for the independent living units, there are 60 more people needing those units than what's availably yeah, it, um, supplied. Mm. Same thing with assisted living, same thing with memory care. Now, Valparaiso has a great university, but not a lot of people know where it is. It's an hour and a half east of Chicago. So we're actually seeing a net immigration into Valparaiso for the lower cost of living. Um, you know, and that's kind of where what we're looking at as as far as identifying assets. Um, so from from the aspect of a potential investor, I would want to make sure that the operator is experienced 
because there is a lot of nuances that go on into running these deals. It, you know, multifamilies had a lot of mom and pop shops pop up, you know, hey, I'm going to go run this apartment, whatever. You, you just can't do that in senior living. Right. Like there's licenses, the way they actually structure it between like an operating company and a property company um, is actually something completely new and different um, to me. So the overall legal structure, it it'll take quite a bit of education to get up to speed on that. Um, but as, as a potential passive investor, you'd want to understand, Hey, you know, where are they looking at in terms of census? You know, the average senior living resident requires 10 touches or 10 interactions before they actually move in. Wow. In, in apartments, you're talking one or two, you know, like we're even texting with our prospects now saying, Hey, you know, do you want this apartment? They reply back. Yes. And then they fill out the application on the phone in senior living. When you're, when you're reviewing these investments, if you have an owner that's going out and saying, Hey, we're going to buy this deal. And on October 1st, and we're going to get 10, 10 move-ins in the first month. I mean, you're able to just call BS like right away. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Sure. You know, because the process is much slower to lease up and you want to make sure that they actually have the available staff working on the property to provide the 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 proper amount of care for the residents there's there's staffing ratios that you have to be aware of you know if it's independent living it's it, it's pretty similar to multifamily but as soon as you get to like assisted living and each state actually has their own set of requirements okay so I don't know all those requirements. I mean, sure. our our underwriting team has. Um, you know, we have we have uh, four regions within Lloyd Jones. Um, you know, a, a COO and a CIO for each of the regions, where they actually underwrite, be become market experts, and then um, actually uh, handle the asset management. Um, okay. For for each of the regions. Yeah, I think I think you know as as a lot of good stuff there, and I appreciate you going to that level of detail. And I think as a passive investor, you know, somebody who's you know got experience in multifamily, self storage, all that good stuff. I think um, you know having some sort of resources, whether it be webinar or, or a, you know some sort of uh, guidebook or something like that into senior living would be massive. Um, you know, are there any places or resources maybe that you could recommend for for our listeners or potential passive investors that they could like check out and uh, learn more about senior living and why it's a good investment, all that good stuff. Yeah, no. Um, so I, I think, you know, starting with, you know, obviously setting up a, a, a follow-up call with me, you know, sure. I'd be happy to actually drill into the underwriting on any of our deals. But um, if they wanted to go out on the web, I mean, I would check out like senior housing, you know, business news, Nick map, Nick map is huge. Um, they actually have like white papers, research papers going over all of the different demographics, the income. Um, and it's actually a really cool interactive platform. I'm not sure if it's subscription based. Okay. Um, if it is, it's, it's going to be pretty reasonable. Uh, but that's, that, that's probably where I would start is just, you know, Googling senior living and then even Googling, you know, baby boomers, 2030 problem or 2030 crisis, and you will get flooded with information on the lack of supply, the lack of care, you know, everything going on there. Awesome. I appreciate you go, uh, you know, telling us about those resources, because I think that's a, that's a great place for people to start, right? Especially people who don't know much about this. Obviously, you know, if you're in a real estate investing space in any sort of real estate investing circle, you've probably heard about this, right? And how it's going to yeah. be a big problem going forward. But, you know, you're still really only seeing multifamily deals, self storage deals as a passive investor, right? Depending on the circles you roll in, but being able to dip your toe into senior senior living with a syndication model is very beneficial to somebody like me as a passive investor, uh, to being able to ride those trends like you talked about earlier and uh, learning more about it, I think is going to be super critical going forward and having those resources is going to be um, definitely needed, right? But uh, so I yeah. appreciate you sharing that. Stuart, man, listen, I've learned a lot today. We're going to have to bring you back on uh, and, and just dive into this more, this topic more um, about senior senior living, see what ha see what's, what it's looking like with uh, your company after, you know, the syndications launched, all that good stuff uh, and dive into it more. But I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Tell the listeners how they can find out more about you and Lord Jones and anything else you have going on. 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if you'd like to get in touch with us, um, it's just going to be Lloyd Jones investments.com. That's L L O Y D J O N E S investments. That's with an S.com. Um, You'll be able to reach out to a member of our investor relations team, which right now it's me and one other individual. So you'll have a direct line to me. Um, or you can just go on to uh, our, our, our normal webpage, LloydJonesLLC.com. Um, everything will have a link from there. Or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Just just look up Stuart Keller and you'll see my smiling mug on on, on that web page. <laughs> I love it, man. We're going to make sure to put all that stuff in the show notes. And I know there'll be a lot of people reaching out because just, just in the circles that I roll in, I know there's been a lot of talk about this and trying to get into this space, right? Without being an active participant, right? You know, being yeah. somebody who's, who's passive, I think is, is, is going to be massive, especially for you guys who are providing this, this service, right? So man, this has been a great conversation again, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, hope to bring you on soon, man. Absolutely. Thank thank you so much for having me, Dan. Hey, real quick before we get out of here, do me a huge favor and leave a rating and review for the podcast. We're always looking to bring you guys the best insights and strategies for building our real estate portfolios and your ratings and reviews really help with getting top guest speakers that are the best in the real estate investing business. I promise this will only take you a few seconds and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for being awesome, guys. Cheers. <laughs>